hello guys thanks for coming back again if you are my subscriber and if you are yet to subscribe to this channel just do us a favor by clicking on the subscribe button and also on the bell beside it to notify you when we drop our wonderful videos it's been a while here um and as you know uh, we have jam class i'm sorry for not be able to give you some videos on jam classes and and i think that will be fixed very soon so you always get your utmost attention on jam classes now why is approaching and as we can see we need to do as we used to do our practical videos and before then to make life easier we just have to talk about the practical tips and some uh, things you have to put in place when you are offering your practical if this is your first time of taking the exam so then you need to know some, some, some certain facts so what is the fact your practical uh, your physics generally is divided into three between so attempts and objective question and uh, theory with practical and this practical we are talking about specifically takes about 40 percent of your total score in physics so if you can get 40 percent of your total score in physics then the rest is what just a piece of cake so uh what happened is we are going to be sharing tips on what um you need to know and you need to do to ensure that you have a successful physics practical and what are those things so let's highlight them one after the other so as we look at those things we begin to uh, open our mind and point on that it means that your table must be clearly stated which means you must have the composite table containing all the parameters in the question take for instance if you are told to find length if you have length l to be plotted against um maybe you, you may be given length or masses let that be in your table and whatever parameters that is meant to be found in that table ensure everything is there and make sure they are in adequate order and they are in any value you are meant to plot uh, sorry any value you are meant to write in your table ensure that they are written in two decimal places and moreover i used to say this at least two decimal places so which means um anyway when you take record uh, when you take readings from instruments you are meant to record them in two decimal places and when you uh, evaluate a particular reading take for instance one ammeter i take a reading of two ampere so i'm going to record that as 2.00 that's already in two decimal place and then if i am to evaluate high inverse or i squared i'm going to put that in three decimal place at least three decimal place. thing is that you must ensure that there is unit in your table you can put the units in the heading as part of the heading so that you wouldn't need to write them down in the values you're going to slot into the table so make sure that the unit is alongside with the heading so that it will reduce much work of writing units in the values in the table <music> errors and disregards of informations are always penalized so make sure you follow all the information given to you strictly and adhere to them ensure that you um, make use of instruments that are given to you or apparatus make use of them with absolute uh, uh, avoiding of errors so that you can get your mark completely <laughs> plot your graph in such a way that you should be able to distinguish your axis and your axis is okay take for instance when we plot a graph in mathematics we used to have x axis we used to have y axis so when you plot your graph in physics take for instance you're plotting t squared against hell if t is period make sure that uh, uh, the axis is totally differentiated from each other make sure you write your t squared with the units on the um, vertical axis since you're plotting t, t squared against l so and l happens to be length so make sure you write your l 
and you put the unit as well on the hex axis that is t squared against l and make sure you start both axes from the origin so that you can also get your mark <laughs> This is very important, you must make use of a good scale, a reasonable scale. And your scale is determined by your table. It is very important you choose a notable scale, I mean a reasonable scale that would suit your table. So when you look at your table and the parameters you're plotting in the graph, all you just need to do is to choose a scale that would be so reasonable to represent those information on the table directly on the graph, so that you can come out with it. Flying colors. Another thing is that all the points on the graph should be plotted correctly. So if you're pl plotting a graph, ensure that you are dotting the points that is corresponding to the points in the table. So take for instance, if we are plotting a graph of t squared against hell, and I have my t squared okay probably to be 0.65 and I have held to be 20 centimeter so I will ensure that the line of 20 centimeter from the L axis meets up with the line exactly on points with the what 0.65 on on T squared axis so these are the clues we have for you for the cup upcoming physics practical anyway it seems to be far away but not more not more longer or not more far away from you and these are things you need to know in order to come out in the flying colors so um we are going to be bringing practical videos for you on physics chemistry biology and some other tips that you may need to know and i'm going to come up with this kind of video for chemistry as well before we shoot the practical videos and you're going to enjoy it so share this channel to people to subscribe and people that may need it um we also take other um, courses here, engineering courses, courses, and also uh, we take any scientific courses on this channel. So you can just share for the benefits of those who need the channel. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's free. Thank you.